Is everyone getting settled in? Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Nils, and I'm the founder of Mention. Uh, we do a lot of interesting things relating to modeling and predicting human behavior. But today, I'm actually not here to talk about what I've done. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about something that I have never done. And I'd like to start the talk today with a confession and admission of a flaw in my character that I hope will make you appreciate the courage it takes for me to get up on this stage today. You see, I have never done anything irrational, ever. And that's what I want to have a conversation with you about today, the idea that human behavior is irrational. And this is not some hubristic claim on my part that I have rational superpowers. It's a lot worse than that. I actually want to extend my hubris to all of you and claim that you have never done anything irrational ever. As a behavioral engineer, I try to predict and model human behavior. And one of the most common criticisms I get is that human behavior is irrational and you can't really predict it. And this criticism is often leveled at the economy, at uh, game theory, at just about any model that tries to make sense of why we do the things that we do. Ha! People say, I bet you cannot explain altruism. And it doesn't have to be altruism. There are tons of things that people are willing to say is irrational. They say, I bet you can't explain smoking. I bet you can't explain gambling. Or in this circuit, I bet you can't explain why Nokia chose to partner with Microsoft. And apart from the fact that we can explain these kinds of behaviors, I find this kind of criticism particularly interesting to me as a philosopher. Because when someone is saying that this behavior is irrational, actually what they're saying is this behavior is bad for you. And by example, altruism is bad for you. And what an interesting thing to say, right? By a show of hands, how many people in here think that altruism is actually a good thing? Very good. So we know that beer is on you guys tonight, Patrick. <laughs> Make a note of that. Altruism is bad for you. What an interesting thing to say when they say that altruism is irrational. Uh, how did they come to that conclusion? Well, one way people got to that conclusion is they studied this old philosophical chestnut, The Prisoner's Dilemma. And The Prisoner's Dilemma is this uh, game that two people can play. And we're going to show how it works. I'm going to play it here with my intern, Patrick. Say hi to Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hello, Bruce. So Patrick and I both have the choice of cooperating with each other or cheating the other person. The problem is that we're actually not allowed to talk to each other. I'm not allowed to know what kind of choice he is going to make. And here's how it works. If we both cooperate, we both get three points. However, if he cooperates when I cheat, I get four points and he only gets one, vice versa. If I cooperate when he cheats, he gets four points, I get one. And if we both cheat, we get two points, right? And you will have noticed by now that it makes a lot of sense to cheat because you can win a maximum of four points and you can win a minimum of two points. Whereas if you cooperate, you can only win three points maximum and the minimum you can win is one. So uh, economists studied this behavior and they made the prediction that, well, everybody should cheat, said the economist. So let's try it out. Patrick, are you ready? One, two, three, defect. defect. OK, so, so far, so good. But when they tried to run this experiment on scale and you know, actually test the hypothesis, they find that people have this uh, weird, unexplainable tendency to sometimes try to cooperate with each other. So if we play again, one, two, three, cooperate. Well, screw you. I was <laughs> Anyhow, they, they noticed that people don't always act selfishly. Sometimes people cooperate. And this is where economists, or some economists, got to prove that they're actually really bad scientists. Because they draw a very weird conclusion from that. They draw the conclusion that everybody is irrational, says the disappointed economist, because people didn't act to maximize their profit. But what they are failing to recognize here is that, you know, maybe there are some things that matter more to us than money. When someone makes the claim that we will always act to maximize uh, a financial profit, we are forgetting a long history of human altruism and heroism. 
human beings act rationally, uh, predictably, in the sense that our brain has been programmed to maximize two very specific goods. Biological propagation, or spreading your genes, and mimetic propagation, spreading your memes. And the rationality of our acts has to be viewed through the lens of our genes and memes trying to propagate, not as an attempt to try to maximize the output for the individual. Simply put, there are causes out there that are bigger than you are, and your brain is not always on your side. In fact, your brain is sort of the enemy. So am I saying that it's not you, it's your brain that's irrational? No, far from it. Your brain, and by extension you, is actually making pretty smart decisions just about all the time. Even when you smoke, even when you engage in high-risk behavior, even when you strap a bomb to yourself, you are acting rationally. So when someone does not act in the way that we anticipated or predicted, it's not fair to say that they are acting irrationally. They might be serving a course other than the one we imagined, and they might have different information than what we have. Even when we second guess ourselves, and say, like, I didn't act irrationally, we might have had different information back then than we had now, right? So what might happen here is we have conflicting desires. There are many things that we want, and the the um, relative importance of these conflictive desi conflicting desires is always going to be subjective. It's going to be a matter of opinion. And I'm sure we can all agree that rationality shouldn't be a question of opinion. It turns out that saying that someone is irrational is a rather subjective, emotionally charged, and illogical statement. It's just not rational to say that someone is irrational. Uh, the brain is doing the best it can with the very limited information given to it and with the very limited attention scope that we have. Your brain is doing a pretty good job. But, in all honesty, it turns out that our brain does suffer from one debilitating handicap. But it's not that we're too stupid to solve the prisoner's dilemma. No, our handicap is that we have very limited situational awareness. We have a ridiculously short attention span and we can only keep so many things in mind at once. And I'd like to demonstrate that to you with two different experiments. And you'd need to all participate in this. Patrick is going to show you a couple of slides with colored circles on them. And as soon as you know how many circles are on the slide, I want you to yell out, and, and don't be shy, I want you to yell out how many circles there are. Does everyone understand how this works? Yeah. Great, let's go. Patrick. Three, two, one. Two, three. Two, three. Okay, so 13, okay. So what just happened here? Why was it that we could tell almost instantly the number of circles on the first slide, but that last slide took a couple of seconds? Well, it's because at a certain point, we actually have to start counting. The brain has no ready-made model of what 13 of something looks like. Close your eyes and picture four apples. Super easy. You don't have to add them one by one. You can just do it. Picture three cars. It's simple. Now picture 13 trees. <laughs> I can't do it. And it, it gets worse. It's not only that we're bad at counting and we're bad at math. Uh, I, 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 I understand that that might be sensitive to say. Some people think they're really great at math, but we're not. Uh, it, it gets worse because it turns out our brain actually has like really, really bad tunnel vision as well. And I'd like to demonstrate that with another experiment. And what this here is, is a movie I want you to pay attention to. It's an awareness test. And in this awareness test, I want you to focus on the people wearing white. And I want you to figure out how many passes does the team in white make. So study the white team. Right, how many got it? The right answer is 13. Sorry about the bad quality, but how many of you see, saw the moonwalking bear? <laughs> Let's watch it again. This time, if you just look at the general picture instead of the white team, you'll notice that in from the right comes a guy in a bear costume. <laughs> and he's doing a dance. And he walks out the left. Right? What just happened? Well, it turns out it's easy to miss something you're not looking for. This was an ad 
for transport for London, and they were telling people to, to you know, don't kill cyclists in traffic, which I think would be a great ad to run here in Beijing as well. <laughs> so that's actually all the fun experiments I have today. I'm going to have to go back to my uh, slides. <clears throat> and uh, let's see here. So yeah, our brain can only do so many things at once. And that's usually what happens when we do something seemingly irrational. We start smoking, even though we know it's a bad idea, because at that moment, when we made that decision, our brain was just not looking at that part of the problem. It's not a, a, a question of stupidity. It's not that we are bad at problem solving, as some people, <coughs> economists, like to claim. It's that we have a very limited attention scope. And when we call someone irrational, we are failing to put ourselves in their shoes. We are failing to imagine what might be important to them at that moment, at that time, what course they were serving, and what information they had. I want to argue and discuss with you that every decision makes sense. You just need to know where to look for the underlying motivations. Predicting human behavior is at the end of the day, not a question of mathematical models and absolute statements. It's about empathy and being able to imagine what might be important to someone other than yourself. Predicting human behavior is an exercise in cultural awareness, sensitivity, and we are never going to fully understand why people do the things that surprise us. If we stick to our guns and call people irrational, instead of asking what's important to you. Thank you very much.